Okay, good day everyone. And thank you all for uh, making the time to be part of this webinar today. As um, Lawrence mentioned, um, I am Eugene. I teach at Laurentian University and uh, I'm a professor here in the mine engineering program. Um, the webinar today is, is a technical one, like he mentioned, and the discussion is on some evaluation techniques for surface underground mining options and transition planning. So we'll basically try to look at um, once a deposit is discovered, what are some of the techniques or the um, ways that we can we can um, use in deciding which mining approach to to use. So um, I'm going to get started, and then we'll try to uh, get through the uh, the slides in the probably 30, 40 minutes, and then leave the rest of the time uh, for, for questions. So while I start presenting, I'm going to turn off my video, and then after that, I will come back, uh, come back on. So just to give you a brief overview of uh, the type of research that I do, um, I mainly do research in uh, mine planning and we do combine optimization and simulation in undertaking uh, such research. I research into integrated mine planning and waste management and mine operations uh, management, uh, as well as uh, reconciliation studies. Um, between these mine planning and mine operation as well. Now, if you look at the diagram I have here, you can see different aspects of research, including um, strategic mining options, optimization, cutoff grade, grade uncertainty, mine to mill, and haulage and stockpiling. So the discussion we are going to have today on mining options optimization is basically one of the research that is, uh, that is done within my research group. Now the research group is made up of about um, nine graduate students and some research associates. And these people um, work in various aspects. So majority of these, uh, of what I'm going to present here, are uh, findings, uh, findings of, uh, of the research that we have done over the period into, into this area. So, that's basically what we do here in uh, Mine Optimization Laboratory at Lawrence University. Now, the outline of the presentation, I'll introduce a discussion on this mining options optimization. Then we'll look at some evaluation techniques uh, for um, surface underground mining options optimization. And then one of the models that we have uh, developed in our research group. And then we'll look at a simple case study on how it works. And then, uh, and then we'll take it from there. So basically, uh, once a resource uh, is discovered, uh, we go through a process where we try to acquire lots and lots of knowledge about a deposit, right? Through exploration, reserve estimation, uh, pre-feasibility and feasibility study. And as we go through these, uh, these different uh, levels of studies, we acquire more and more knowledge about a deposit. Now, sometime, around the pre-feasibility stage, we try to acquire some information, we'll try to make a decision on whether we want to mine the deposit through open pit mining or through underground mining. Now, we will see, as I presented, that previous techniques uh, look at these things, these approaches uh, in a different way, and the opportunities that can be leveraged if we, we approach it from a much more global optimization perspective. So most of the things that we're talking about today is, is uh, more applicable at a pre-feasibility stage where you are making a decision between which mining method or which mining option to use. And then once you make a decision, then you can do some additional studies during the feasibility study before you implement your, your mining system. So to, to give a brief background of the problem definition or the, what we are trying to talk about. So you've discovered a deposit. And if you look at the first figure, I have figure A, um, you probably would want to make a decision whether you want to mine it with open pit mining or with underground mining. 
if you want to mine it with open pit mining, then which part should be mined with open pit and then which part should be mined with underground. So if you look at the figure, we are considering a pit and some form of uh, underground open stove mining. And if you look at the figures B and C, again, you've discovered a deposit and you're looking at um, which pushback you should mine with uh, open pit operations. And then when do you transition to underground? So you could see that uh, there's a possibility of pit one in this figure B being open pit. And then you could go subsequently to the other part of the deposit using underground mining. You could also um, proceed with pit one and pit two with open pit and then continue with underground mining. Or you could uh, implement both, which is the simultaneous operations at the same time. Uh, so there are various uh, possibilities that could be looked at. And that's where the global optimization comes in, uh, because if you are to look at this based on scenarios, there's a good chance that you might miss some of the uh, possible combinations that actually exist as far as uh, exploiting the deposit is concerned. So this is what we are trying to discuss here. Uh, which of these mining methods you want to use, either open pit or underground, or which combination of these two you want to uh, implement to be able to get the best out of your deposit uh, and to make maximize your net present value as well as the amount of the deposit that you can you can recover. So the uh, fundamental questions we are trying to answer here, or we are trying to approach here, is: Are we do we want to use surface mining methods to to do the mining or underground mining uh, methods to uh, do the extraction, or? Do we want to undertake surface mining followed by underground mining, which is sequential, or we want to start with some form of underground mining followed by uh, surface mining, um, or a combination of surface and underground mining occurring simultaneously. So basically, uh, surface mining starts, and then once it starts, uh, your, your shaft can start, it will start being synced from, from somewhere, and then you can assess some of the material through underground mining. So both of the operations uh, uh, starts at the same time. Sometimes also in terms of the B, sometimes um, a smaller version of underground mining may be started and then at some point in time, uh, a bigger surface mining operation may start. So there are different combinations of these mining systems or mining options that are really possible for any deposit. So the strategy here is that how do we evaluate a given deposit with all these various variations to make sure that we are uh, maximizing the best uh, from, from this deposit. So that, that brings us to the various evaluation techniques that are possible in undertaking such a, such a study. Uh, there are five fundamental um, approaches that, uh, that exist so far. And then of course, within our research group, uh, we also came up with um, a modified version of, of of one of these evaluation techniques, which seeks to leverage all the other basic or fundamental approaches. Now, the first one uh, is referred to as the biggest economic pit. I will go over each of these uh, subsequently, but we have the biggest economic pit approach uh, for um, doing open pit underground uh, mining transition studies. And then we have what we call the incremental uh, undiscounted cash flow approach. Then we have the automated scenario analysis approach, and then the stripping ratio approach, the opportunity cost approach, and then the competitive economic evaluation approach. So the, the, the five listed up here, these ones up here, those are all existing methods that have been uh, used uh, uh, previously. And the competitive economic evaluation approach is the approach that uh, was developed within our research group, which I will provide some additional details on as we go through the slide. So let's take each of these um, um, evaluation techniques and then try to go through them, uh, try to understand the basics of how they are applied. And then of course, we will then be able to um, go through the competitive economic evaluation and see how it differs from the others. And, and that's basically the, the main um, the main intention of this of this presentation. Now, with the biggest economic pit um, approach, as the name suggests, uh, you have a deposit. Um, if you look at my schematics here, you have a deposit. Now, what you do in this case is to go through the process and generate 
your ultimate pit limit, and then um, everything within the ultimate pit limit, you consider that to be extracted by open pit mining. And then of course, you evaluate anything beyond the ultimate pit limit uh, for, for underground mining. So some of the highlights of this approach uh, basically is uh, the traditional method of evaluating mining options for uh, given deposits. Um, it evaluates the discovered mineral resource primarily for open pit mining and then any portion of the deposit that falls outside the, uh, the ultimate, ultimate pit limit will then be evaluated for, uh, for underground mining. So this is one of the first fundamental uh, traditional way of uh, looking at the mining options studies and the mining option optimization um, uh, approach. Then we have the um, incremental undiscounted cash flow approach. Now with this approach, um, the idea here is to assess the mineral resource by comparing uh, the marginal open pit profit per depth. So you look at um, how much profit you make anytime you increase the depth of the open pit operation. So if you look at the first pit I have here, pit one, right? So if you are to move from pit one to pit two by increasing the depth of this, uh, of pit one, how much profit are you making by this additional increment in depth for, for pit one uh, to, move it, to move it to pit two, okay? And once you calculate this profit uh, increment in, in depth for this pit one, you can then compare the same profit that you can make when you use underground method to extract this particular, uh, this particular depth, okay? So when the open pit profit is less than the underground profit, less or equal to the underground profit, then of course you want to terminate the open pit profit and then transition to underground mining, okay? So you compare, an incremental uh, profit in the open pit with the corresponding underground extraction profit. And if the open pit profit is less or equal to the underground profit, then you terminate the open pit profit and then you uh, consider extracting the remaining of the deposit with underground, uh, underground mining. Now this transition depth is typically shallower than the biggest economic pit approach uh, because you are continuously uh, making this comparison. And we do know in theory that there are some blocks at the base of the pit uh, that have that generate very marginal profit that usually are more profitable through underground mining. Now, one of the things you will notice with these first two approaches, which is the biggest economic pit and the incremental on this kind of cash flow, is that these two approaches so far do not consider uh, discounting, which is the time value of money, in the uh, in the uh, transitions optimization approach. Then the third evaluation technique uh, is referred to as the automated scenario analysis. So this basically uh, is like generating a schedule uh, for your open pit operation, right? And once you are generating a schedule, it means that you are introducing discounting, uh, unlike the uh, biggest economic pit and incremental on this kind of cash flow, you introduce discounting. Now you approach this automated scenario analysis by considering uh, that you, you can possibly have uh, crown pillars or transition points at various parts of the deposit. So you could have you could have a transition at location one, location two, location three, location four, and so on and so forth. And then you evaluate each of these transition points for open pit operation and underground operation. So you consider that if your transition is at location one, then everything on top of it is open pit and everything below it is underground. So you calculate or you try to uh, compute the overall project value based on this transition point. Then you consider transition point two, and then you evaluate everything on top of it for open pit operation, and then everything below it for underground operation, and then you can calculate your overall uh, project value as well. So you go through these selected um, discrete transition um, points, and then you calculate your project value for all these. And then of course, the transition point that generates the best project value is what you're going to proceed with as your uh, mining option between the open pit and underground. Now, sometimes you could consider discrete transition location uh, as, in, uh, as in figure A, or sometimes you could also look at some form of a continuous transition location. So you have a band, a band of, uh, of depth 
that you move your transition location within this band at various levels. And then you try to continuously uh, evaluate your open pit underground um, project value to see uh, where the, the optimal uh, transition location should lie. So that is basically the automated scenario analysis. Uh, it does in, in, include discounting, like, like I mentioned earlier. The challenge with this is that uh, for you to be able to evaluate all the potential transition locations, that can be a challenge. But if in theory you could uh, evaluate all the potential transition locations, then you are heading towards uh, an optimal uh, solution for, for your problem. Now, a set of transition points are evaluated and open pit underground arrangements that offers the highest NPV selected for further analysis and design. So basically, that is that for the automated scenario analysis. Okay, so those are the first three uh, primary or fundamental techniques in the open pit underground transition optimization studies. Then we have what we call the stripping ratio uh, evaluation technique. So here, um, you compute your overall stripping ratio. Uh, and then you match that against the allowable, allowable stripping ratio for your open pit operation as uh, been set. Okay. Now, we do know that as the open pit mining deepens, the stripping ratio usually uh, increases, and, and that, overall, that increases the overall mining cost. Now, you determine your overall stripping ratio, and you compare it with the allowable, allowable stripping ratio that has been set by the mine management. And once the, um, the what do you call it, overall stripping ratio, it becomes equal to allowable, then you have to end your open pit operation and then transition to um, underground operation. So basically, um, that is how the transition, the stripping ratio uh, evaluation technique also, also works. And then the fifth or the last of the fundamental approaches for the uh, open pit underground mining options uh, transition studies is the opportunity cost approach, uh, which is one of the most recent developed by uh, Whittle and his, uh, and his colleagues. Now, with this approach, um, it's an extension of the LG algorithm approach. And what it does in this case is that you compute the um, underground value and open pit value for each block. So you consider every block, and if it was to be extracted by open pit, it was subtracted by underground, pay, underground uh, operation, um, what would be the economic block value for each, each of the blocks. So you compute each of these uh, economic block values for each of these blocks, and then you calculate the opportunity cost by subtracting the underground EBV from the open pit uh, economic block value. Okay? So basically, uh, all the blocks that generate the uh, positive uh, Opportunity cost means that those blocks are not available for underground mining. Uh, and you also have to take into consideration your um, pit slopes as well. And then the blocks that will generate the reverse are those that are available for underground mining. Because if you are, subtract, you are subtracting the uh, open pit minus the underground, then if it is greater than zero, it means that the open pit is making uh, more, uh, more economic block value or more money than extracting it with underground. And that's why if you look at the example I have here, these are the blocks that are not available for underground mining. And then those are the ones that are available for uh, underground mining. And then if you need to put in any crown pillar, then those blocks there will be used for, uh, for the crown pillar. Now, if you view the, uh, the paper that was, uh, that was produced to back this approach, if they have uh, proof of this concept in, in, in that paper, and it will provide a lot of details on that. Now, the optimized pit value is always smaller. Uh, uh, so the pit value you generate using this approach is always smaller than you will have generated with your normal pit optimization approach. However, the value of the open pit, the, uh, the value of the sum of the open pit and underground mine uh, become maximized. So if you combine the value from both the open pit operation and the underground operation, um, you end up with a much better value uh, from, from this opportunity cost uh, approach. So those are the uh, various um, uh, previous techniques that have been uh, put out there for open pit underground uh, optimization uh, studies. Um, now, beyond this, uh, we also looked at what we refer to 
uh, in our studies as the competitive economic evaluation approach. Now, uh, this also is an extension of these techniques that I have discussed, except that in this particular approach, uh, we do introduce, first of all, um, the crown pillar positioning as part of the op optimization approach, right? So we don't only uh, evaluate each block for to be considered for open pit operation or to be considered for underground operation. We do also consider the fact that the block could belong to the crown pillar or could be left as being unmined. So every block is being evaluated for all these four different uh, scenarios. And once you finish your optimization, you then be able to know which block belongs to uh, which of these uh, different options. Now, the highlights of this approach is that uh, there's a competition for every block between the open pit operation and underground mining. So every block is being competed for between these two mining options. This approach leverages the strength of the other fundamental techniques. So it includes discounting. It also includes positioning of the crown pillar as well. And it has been incorporated into a mixed integer linear programming model um, so that we could also introduce some additional constraints to make sure that the mining operation is realistic and is practical as well. So we're going to then look into this uh, approach, comparative economic evaluation approach, which has been introduced into an MILP model, mixed integer linear programming model, and used for this mining options optimization study uh, subsequently. So for the proposed model, uh, which is the MILP based on the competitive economic evaluation, it does interrogate the block model. And for each block in that block model, whether it belongs to the open pit operation or whether it should belong to the underground operation, right? Whether the blocks uh, should be mined uh, with simultaneous open pit and underground mining with crown pillar. So in other, in other words, some part of the uh, mine should be open pit, and then uh, some parts should be underground simultaneously, uh, being mined at the same time, or sequential, which means open pit followed by underground mining uh, operation, or a combination of both simultaneous and sequential. So in this case, uh, open pit and underground starts at the same time, and then at some point in time, there's a transition between the open pit uh, to the underground operation. So with this, uh, with this proposed model, um, basically some of the uh, inputs that we, we try to uh, put in here will be the interaction between the open pit and underground operation to make sure that the mining system uh, is practical. Uh, you feed it with your block model as well. And then you have to also have constraints to control or to generate your stockpiling as well as your processing, uh, processing schedule. Now, in terms of the output, um, you'll be generating your NPV for the project, as well as the location of the crown pillar, the extraction schedules for both uh, processing and development, as well as any geotechnical um, schedules in, in terms of uh, rock support. Now, the objective function for this model, um, like I mentioned earlier on, is a competition between open pit mining and underground mining. So you have, an, you have one part of the objective function, which evaluates the open pit mining operation. Um, and then you have another part that evaluates the underground mining operation. So for every block, it's being evaluated whether it should belong to open pit mining or it should belong to underground mining. And then you have another part of the objective function that manages the open pit stockpiling as well as the underground stockpile. And then the development for uh, the primary development that is a shaft for underground operations, as well as the development for ventilation and development for the operations, operational development. And then the last part of the relative function is to, um, is to manage your rock support for the underground operation in both the stops and in both the operational development. So you have various components or parts of the objective function and through the optimization, um, you try to, you try to uh, evaluate each block, whether it should belong to open pit mining or underground mining subject to the various constraints that are supposed to be managed uh, through the optimization process. 
So that is basically uh, some basics on the, on the model. Now let's take a quick look at uh, a simple case study, a small case study that was uh, tested with this model. Uh, it was a gold deposit, a small gold deposit, um, which uh, that's a simple cross section of it, a simple uh, orthogonal projection of that deposit. Now, after implementation uh, for this example, um, it was the optimal, uh, what you call optimization was done at a 5% gap. Um, and you could see that you have the open pit operation uh, up here, then the location of the crown pillar, as well as the um, underground operation. And then the schedule for the various blocks is what you see in there uh, for, for this particular uh, example. Okay, so throughout the, through the optimization, you determine when every block should be scheduled, which block belongs to the crown pillar, which block belongs to the underground operation, and so on and so forth. So you could see that for the underground part, um, it's preferred to start the mining from the deeper part and then uh, started coming up because there were higher grades beneath that point. Now, in terms of the schedule, um, you could see that the operation started with open pit mining and then somewhere in this region, underground operation also started uh, simultaneously and then it transitioned to a completely uh, underground operation. So open pit and then simultaneous mining and then it, uh, it transitioned sequentially to underground mining completely. So this is your all tonnage schedule and then that's the uh, rock ton. So um, how much or and waste, how much uh, from open pit and underground mine, both ore and waste uh, that was extracted for this particular operation. And this shows the schedule for the development, both primary and secondary development um, that was generated to support the uh, mining operation. And this is the extraction schedule uh, for each level of the underground mine operation. Uh, so you could see the various levels here. Uh, from level five to nine, and when each one was extracted in each of the periods. So in general, mining started from the lower level and then proceeded to upper levels because of the uh, configuration of the deposit. And this also shows the ventilation development for, uh, for this operation. Um, so you have the uh, primary ventilation development, the ventilation shaft development, as well as the operational development for both the stoves and for the operational development. So basically those are some of the results that was generated for, uh, for, for this particular case study. Then we did a small comparison, uh, trying to generate the same, uh, trying to undertake a similar study using Whittle. Of course, Whittle is not primarily designed for this type of study, but it was just for uh, basis of uh, for comparison. Now, for the case of the comparison with Wordle, we used the biggest economic pit, but the discounted one. So we generated the open pit outline uh, from, from the Wordle scheduling uh, algorithms and then compared that with the result from the MILP. Now, one of the things that we noticed was that uh, sometime around these regions, around the uh, period eight to 17, um, Riddle, because there were some high grade in the lower portion, Riddle continued to try to generate the open pit um, by mining a lot of uh, waste material uh, to be able to, to get to the lower portion. And mainly because it doesn't see the opportunity that it has as far as under, uh, using underground mining to go deeper is concerned. Now with the MILP model, uh, similarly, uh, as we saw earlier on, it tried to uh, transition to underground mining because it did not want to go through this process of uh, of high stripping, uh, what you call high stripping ratio. So from the uh, results here, you could see the mine life was significantly less for the MILP, mainly because it, it decided to uh, transition to underground quickly and, and mine with less waste, whereas the um, using open pit alone was more than two times the, the mine life and the stripping ratio was significantly lower uh, compared to uh, what we generated. 
So the NPV as well was, was way higher than what could be generated, mainly because of the lots and lots of waste that was generated in the case of Weddell. Now, the, uh, the caveat here, the point to note is that in this particular uh, example, um, there were about 15% of the material left for, for in the Whittle case that we could have evaluated with underground mining that wasn't done. So if that was done, that will increase the NPV uh, for the case of Whittle. And then also for the case of the MRP, we do acknowledge that there might be some additional cost for implementing simultaneous open pit and underground. Um, it could be ground control uh, cost and things like that, that was not included as well. So that will eventually um, uh, eat into this uh, MPV that was generated. So to summarize the comparison, um, the result from the MRP includes a discounted open pit that limits the exclusion, that limit that uh, excludes marginal open pit blocks that are more profitable through underground mining. So once the MRP sees that some blocks are more profitable through underground mining, it decided to uh, switch to underground mining and extract it with that. Um, it also ended the mine life. Uh, it had a shorter mine life, um, whereas uh, Widow had a much longer, and that's why the, the, the MPV was very different. And then it also avoids excessive mining of waste uh, by transitioning to underground, um, which you couldn't, you, you couldn't see if you were to use Whittle alone. So it's important that when you are doing these type of uh, assessment at the pre-feasibility pre stage, you want to go through these motions to be sure that you are, you are actually using the best approach and you are transitioning at the right time. So here are some uh, references for um, the, the presentation that I just, I just gave. Um, mainly the part that was done through our research group, which I presented now was mainly done by uh, Bright Fum, uh, his PhD thesis. And so these are all uh, documents that you can find online. These are papers you can find online. So once uh, we make these slides and the videos available, you could, um, you could go for them and get more information on them, as well as the paper from, uh, from Weddell that uh, highlighted the opportunity cost approach. Now that is the end of my presentation.